question 30. Vegetable oils contains trans fats and we are expected to see which one of the four is actually a trans fat and is optically active. Now the trans here is in the sense of whether it's cis trans and all that. So we have to look for one that has is a trans isomer and then we have to check whether it has a chiral carbon. Right? So we look at A using the H as a guide, the hydrogen as a guide, you will realize that this is actually a trans isomer, so it is possible. We will leave it aside. B, the double bonds here, the hydrogens are on diagonally opposite sides, so it is also a trans isomer, so it is possible. Right. C, the double bond, the hydrogens are on the same side, so actually this is a cis so it's out D same side hydrogen so it is it's a cis version right D is also out between A and B then we have to check whether which of the two have an a chiral carbon which of the two is optically active so meaning which one contains a carbon that's joined to four other groups so we look along the line and then we come to here now this carbon has four groups one two three and this whole thing four okay including h one two three four the th the issue is these two groups are actually the same okay because if you look at it, it's R1, R1, CO2, CH2, exactly the same as this group. So actually this is not joined to four different groups. Right, so but if you look at B, this carbon is one group, two groups, three groups, four groups here. And importantly, these two groups are not the same because this is R1, this is R2. So is chiral here, optically active molecule. Thirty one. We have three species, and they say that free radicals contain two unpaired electrons and they are called di radicals so they're asking which of them are di radicals right so it might be easier if we just focus on the outer electrons for all the atoms so oxygen has six outer electrons six outer electrons in the second shell so i'll start off with the second shell 2s 2p we have three orbitals one two three four five six so oxygen actually has two unpaired electrons it is a di radical for chlorine is about 17 electrons you can draw all 17 now or you can just focus on the outer electrons which is seven outer electrons so i'll do that seven outer electrons and it has three shells so i'll just focus on the third shell and see how the seven electrons actually fills in right 3s 3p one two three four five six seven three five six seven so it has only one unpaired electron so it is not a diuretical that essentially rules out three already because there's no one and three combination but we can check and and see what ch3 is like ch3 i'll draw it in a shape of the bonding electrons the outer electrons Right, so carbon, one, two, three, uses three of its outer electrons. There's four outer electrons for carbon, which is unused. 
so it only has one unpaired electron so answer is statement one only Thirty-two. Group two metals have higher melting point than group one metals. So, what factors will contribute to the higher melting point? The general idea is melting point for metals. Metals melting point. The more delocalized electrons you have, it's like a glue and all that. It's like a glue that holds them together. The higher the melting point will be the higher the metallic bonding will be so it is proportional to number of electrons or number of delocalized electrons okay number of electrons that goes into the sea of electrons and then it is inversely proportional to the ionic radius if your ions are big they are less tightly held together if your ions are small they are held together more strongly so if you have more delocalized electrons you have higher melting point if your size is smaller you have higher melting point so using that we compare group 1 and group 2 smaller interatomic differences distances in the group 2 they are saying that group 2 is actually smaller ions than group 1 which is true okay, for example um, we have sodium plus and then we have magnesium 2 plus ion okay. not too clear here but the magnesium 2 plus because of more protons and all that it will be able to pull the shell closer to the center so group one have larger radius than group two comparing across the period so and because group two is smaller in radius they will have higher melting point so this contributes to the higher melting point more electrons are available from each group two atoms right each group two atoms can donate two electrons each group one atom usually will de donate only one electron so the more electrons you have into the sea of electrons the stronger the glue will be so more electrons available from group 2 will allow them to have higher metallic bonding stronger metallic bonding so this is true statement 3 group 2 have higher first ionization energy now this statement is true it is harder to remove electrons from group 2 right because of the more they have more protons and all that which holds on to the electrons more tightly but this one if they don't give up the electrons easily it means that they do not they are not willing to donate into the sea of electrons so this one contradicts the the pattern that we are supposed to have that supports group 2 having a higher melting point okay if you have higher ionization energy it means you are less likely to donate electrons or to delocalize your electrons into the sea of electrons and if you are less likely it just means that you have less delocalized electrons and if so it will not support the idea that group 2 have higher melting point so this statement doesn't contribute to the higher melting point for group 2 so statement 1 2 is correct statement 3 not correct